We're taking a community study of um, all the different fishes that are in this particular uh, part of the lake at this particular time. Uh, we're going through the whole 18 inch layer, which represents several hundred to several thousand years of this lake's time. So we're getting an idea what lived in this lake at different times. Um, let's get this Notagonius too while we're at it. So we're gonna be able to see uh, what species were there, how many of each species, as well as, as, well as if there's any mass mortalities, uh, groups of fishes dying off by the hundreds and, or the thousands sometimes. But so far we're just finding a lot of individuals and they died in a pretty level or planar surface. Uh, there's not any um, uh, dipping of the fish, so they're all basically in two-dimensional form. And so we're getting the orientation, what direction the fish were laying in when they died to see if there's any current information, water currents. So that's what we're doing. We can tell which species we're looking at by the little bumps and ridges now. And uh, once they get back to the museum, of course, they'll be a lot easier to see once the preparators remove the rock off the bones. But here we have something called Pristicara. And there's a little seed above it from the Tree of Heaven. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a tree that today was in, endemic to China. In fact, it, it turns out it was endemic to North America. This is called a Notagonius. This is from the family Gonorinkidae, and uh, these are today known as sand eels, although they're not really eels. But this is important because this is a family that is extinct in North America today and has some um, relatives surviving. Uh, in the Indo-Pacific region, and those relatives are marine. So the presence of these fishes in here suggests the possibility of a connection to the sea somehow. It could be that we have fishes that uh, uh, reproduce in the lake and then swim out to sea and then come back at some stage to reproduce again. Then we have something called Diplomistus, and that's this fish here. These are one of the more abundant fishes in the Green River deposits. And this is the most abundant large fish in the Green River deposits. This fish gets up to about two feet long. This is a nice specimen here. And this is the, this is where the fish is actually in the slab. And if we go over here, we can see the impression of one that was on the top piece that we took off. So this is just represented by an impression now. And here you can see the vertebral column. And here you can see the head. Here's an impression of a large perch-like fish called Priscicara that came out of the uh, top layer. And over here we have a little herring type fish called Nydia eosena. This is an impression of a piece that came out on the top. We have uh, several of these dotting this slab here and there. And uh, they're so common that we often don't mark them. You can see we have a lot of different fishes. We have some plants, we have little pieces of insects. We have a lot of things represented in this top slab. And we will be taking these plates up so we can get to the next layer and see what's in it. Got another bug. Another bug? Wow. <laughs> There's something really rare that we don't normally find in the quarry. This is a bird. Mm. We can see there's the leg. Claws, and we even have the feathers preserved as these dark brown areas here, and the rest of it's covered over. So um, this is going to be a great thing to prepare and see what's under there.